Hi, I'm Roseanne Ullman, and uh, welcome to my series on Always Modern, which marked the 75th anniversary of Modern Salon Magazine, and now we are at the 100th anniversary. I'm reading these articles that I wrote 25 years ago, uh, and I hope all the new people entering the industry enjoy the history of hair and fashion and business and America. This is the Roaring Twenties, Soar Soaring Beauty Salon Industry. Flappers and bootleggers, streetcars and rumble seats, permanent wave machines and Marcel irons. The Twenties were uproariously exciting. At the same time, making money became serious business and the new players were no longer all male. The relaxed mores of the time saw hemlines lifted along with the taboos that kept women from voting, working, and even cutting their hair. Birth of the Bob. The quote, beauty parlor, end quote, industry that predated the early to mid 1920s catered to actresses and wealthy ladies serving primarily to dress their long hair in the pinned up fashions of the day. When the Charleston became the dance craze, the flappers who performed it established the brazen new style for the 20s, short skirts and short hair to match. Also setting trends were actresses who no longer confined to the venue of the stage became widely admired and recognizable through their roles in silent movies and the first talkies. They made it clear that the hair to have was the bob, which, depending on the year, was marcelled, finger waved, permanent waved, or augmented with hair pieces. No longer was the hair salon reserved for the rich and famous. Every woman had to have a bob. At first, salon owners panicked that short hair would ruin them. They foresaw their shampoo business drying up because women could shampoo short hair themselves. They also anticipated that they would run out of ways to bob ahead, whereas long hair offered more styling possibilities. When new permanent wave machines, combined with stylists' endless creativity, subdued that fear, owners fretted about just the opposite development. What if long hair came back? Indeed, the pendulum always swings, and soon younger women who had never worn longer hair became curious enough to grow it. Still, the smart bet was that short hair was here to stay. It represented all the independence that women had won. The bob gave youth to the middle-aged, freedom to the sports-minded, and an opportunity for every woman to model her idea of chic. Birth of the modern salon. Those who wagered the other way paid the price. The old beauty parlors that hung on to long hair styling died out during the 20s. The beauty shops that took their place were more professionally run, sometimes the result of mergers or part of a chain. They were wired with electricity, which still wasn't universally understood. Owners added services, began to departmentalize, expanded hours of operation to accommodate working women, and focused on personalized service and courtesy. They gave high priority to neatness and cleanliness, established retailing centers, and studied sales techniques. They professionalized their accounting and record-keeping methods, ad advertised aggressively in newspapers, and learned about other effective advertising means, such as direct mail. In short, they set the standard for the 20th century beauty salon. Birth of full service. There was no end to the products and equipment that came along during this era. From always evolving hair dryers, to new formulations that improved hair's manageability, to the little pot of gold known as bobby pins. At the beginning of the decade, henna was the only color choice that looked at all natural. But as the 20s progressed, much improved hair dyes had observers pre predicting that soon no woman would allow her hair to go gray. It wasn't color, but perms that by far made up the 20s salon's greatest profit center. Continuous improvements to the newly developed permanent wave machines made waving hair easier and more effective as the 20s continued. Demand grew from the limited number of women who could pay up to $40 for a spiral wave early in the decade to the millions who flocked to the vastly lower priced croquignol wave and the more affordable spiral wave of the later 20s. Although straight bobs appeared very early in the decade and the close to the head shingle bob enjoyed a long popularity, once waves and curls took hold, it seemed that straight hair would disappear as surely as shoulder length hair had. Cosmetologists recognized that since beauty involved more than hair, salons should offer a full menu of beauty services. 
They may not have had a term for spa services in the 1920s, but that did not keep many salons from including a department comprising skin care, face and body massage, electrolysis, nail care, scalp treatments, makeup application, and weight control called reducing. Through proper attention, cosmetologists believed they could eliminate just about any condition, dandruff, oily scalp, hair loss, acne, wrinkles, sunburn, obesity, nervousness, brittle nails, and so on. The new availability of ultraviolet and infrared rays gave salons an additional weapon in fighting all sorts of skin and scalp ailments. Although the medical community balked at sal salons using the rays, for the most part, medical and cosmetology professionals considered themselves practically colleagues. It wasn't unusual for cosmetologists to be a doctor as well. Birth of the beauty community. Salons underwent so much change so fast and their numbers grew so rapidly that they found it helpful to band together in associations. The 1920s marked the beginning of a structure that remains today with local organizations belonging to state organizations that make up a strong national body. The National Hairdressers and Cosmetologists Association was the primary organization, but others existed as well. Hair shows that combined education, competition, business meetings, and socializing took place around the calendar and all over the country. Both the NHCA's annual convention and the Chicago Group's Midwest show premiered during this decade. From the beginning, salon professionals made sure this would be a compassionate industry. The Orphan Fund was founded to provide aid for hairdressers who needed financial assistance. With so much progress under its belt, the salon industry regarded lopsided levels of business as its biggest problem as the decade drew to a close, according to the December 1929 Modern Beauty Shop. May through July brought the highest volume and in general spring and fall were busy with clients getting perms, while late summer and much of the winter months slowed to a trickle. Although the stock market had crashed that October, industry buzz didn't yet anticipate any overall fallout for beauty salons. But then, no one knew that what would become known as the Great Depression already had begun. Now here's a little sidebar. In the 20s, the ideal woman of the 1920s stood five foot five inches, had measurements of 34, 27, 37, and weighed between 128 and 148, depending on her age. To mention just a few, among the popular hairstyles of the time were the shingle bob, wind-blown cut, slave chain hairdress, two-in-one bob, vanity wave, coquette, baby doll bob, lorelei bob, fringe bob, and co-ed. Wigs and hair pieces remained in fashion throughout the decade. Toward the end of the 20s, it became trendy to wear longer hair for evening events, so women attached different sorts of knots and curls to the back of their daytime bobs. Going retro to colonial times, wigs turned silver and later broke out in a rainbow of pastels to match whatever the lady was wearing. In the early 20s, white skin was so in vogue that bleaching services for the face, neck, and arms were offered in the salon. As the leisure class took to the golf course and the beach, tans became more of a status symbol. It was 70 years ago that manufacturers first developed products that blocked sunburn while promoting tanning. Makeup colors followed the trend with deeper oranges and darker beiges lining the shelves for the first time. I want to remind you that this was written in 1999, so all time references about today and until now refer to 1999, not 2024. I hope you enjoyed the 1920s, and next up will be the 1930s.